and thank you for joining us. My name is Dan Larson. I am chair of the Wheat Ridge Planning Commission. Before we begin, here are a few notes about our meeting format tonight. Tonight's Planning Commission meeting is being held online. Commissioners, Planning Department staff, and members of the public are attending by way of a Wheat Ridge City Zoom account. Although we are not obliged to, we are following the lead of City Council and suspending in-person meetings of Planning Commission through February. We are advised that positivity rates have increased in Jefferson County and there is a rise in cases among city staff. In order to help mitigate possible risk of spreading the virus, we are going back to virtual meetings through the next month. In addition to online via Zoom, we're also broadcasting this meeting on channel eight and wheatridgespeaks.org. Members of the public may speak to the commission by raising your hand on Zoom or by calling in. A Zoom meeting link and dial-in information is provided on wheatridgespeaks.org. When it is time for public comment, and there are two public comment periods tonight, those who wish to comment on, Zoom connect, on the Zoom connection, please use the raise your hand button. If you are dialing in, press star nine to raise your hand. If you plan to speak online tonight, please keep background noise to a minimum. If you do not plan to speak, we recommend you simply view the meeting live by watching on channel eight or on wheatridgespeaks.org. We appreciate your participation in tonight's meeting. We hope to create a friendly and respectful atmosphere for public dialogue, and we appreciate your help in this process. I would now like to call to order the City of Wheat Ridge Planning Commission meeting for January 20th, 2022. I don't have a gavel, so I'm gonna just knock. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I get a roll call of the members, please. Jahi Simbai. Here. Christine Disney. Here. Melissa Antle. Present. Will Kearns. Here. Daniel Larson. Here. And Janet Leo is absent tonight. So with five members, we do have a quorum, correct? Yes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please virtually stand up and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item is approval of the order of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the order of tonight's agenda? I move that we approve the order of tonight's agenda. Second. There is a, a motion and second. Any additions or corrections to tonight's agenda? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have one question and I probably should have asked earlier, I apologize. Um, on Under 8 uh, A, we don't typically vote under new business. And I just wanna make sure we're that is correct. Is this not a public, something that the public comments on? And uh, I'm sorry, oh, uh, the uh, resolution we're considering tonight? Is that your correct. question? Yeah, correct. Under new business. We don't typically, we don't typically vote on things in new business. So I just wanted to double check and make sure that was in the right place in our agenda. Maybe yeah, thanks, Lauren. thanks for asking. It's not a public hearing item. We can take public comment if we want to, um, but it's a, it's okay to, to vote on a resolution or a motion at that time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, thank you for clearing that up. If there are any other questions on the order of tonight's agenda, we'll call for a vote. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion approved five to zero. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our meeting on December 16th, 2021? Motion to approve the minutes. Second. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion about the, meet the many meeting minutes from our last meeting? Seeing none, we will call for a vote. Raise your hand to approve. Motion approved four to zero. And Jahi, I assume you are abstaining. Correct. 
Perfect. Thank you. We'll now open the general interest public forum segment of our agenda. This is the time for any person to speak on a subject that is not on tonight's agenda. If you plan to speak on an item on tonight's public hearing agenda, please wait until the hearing for that item. All speakers are asked to limit their speeches to three minutes and speakers may not donate their time. If you plan to speak, please give us your name, spell your last name and share your address. We'll now open the public, the general interest public forum. Are there any, is there anyone who has, who has raised their hand to speak during this session? Uh, nobody yet has raised their hand. If you um, are on a computer, please click raise your hand. If you are on the phone and would like to speak for the public forum, please press star nine. And again, this is the general interest segment. You can speak on any topic that's not on tonight's agenda. And nobody is raising their hand. Okay, thank you. I will close now close the general interest public forum. Move on to our next item. Item number seven, this is a public hearing. This is the only item on tonight's public hearing agenda. It is case number WZ2106. This is an application filed by Dutch Brothers for approval of a specific development plan or SPD for a drive through coffee shop for property located at 47 I'm sorry, 3478 Clear Creek Drive. I would like to again welcome members of the public to our hearing. It is important that, that this hearing be conducted in a dignified and civil manner. Our goal, as always, is to create a friendly and respectful atmosphere for public dialogue. And we appreciate your help with this process. We start all public hearings with a presentation from staff, and in some cases, a presentation from the applicant. After these presentations, commissioners will ask questions to the staff and the applicant. After that, we'll invite members of the public to raise their hand and comment during the citizens forum. Is there a staff presentation for this evening's item? There is, I'd like to introduce our senior planner, Scott Cutler. Thanks, Lauren. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I have a presentation and then I will turn it over to the applicant. Um, Lauren will promote all of the applicant panelists after my presentation. So. I'll go ahead and get started by sharing my screen. Give me just a second. Lauren, can you enable screen sharing? Sorry, out of practice. That should work now. It's good. Uh, and let me know if you can see it. There we go. We're good. All right, um, go ahead and get started. So this is case number WZ2106. Um, which is a request for approval of a specific development plan for a Dutch Bros coffee shop in the Clear Creek Crossing plan mixed use development. I would like to enter into the public record, the case file, this digital presentation. The properties within the city of Wheat Ridge and all appropriate notification and posting requirements have been met. Therefore, planning commission has jurisdiction to hear this case. This is a 2020 aerial view of the property, uh, which is outlined in red. And a lot has changed since this 2020 aerial view of the site. There's now a gas station just south of the property and to the north um, across the hook ramps, there's a three-story bank building that's nearing completion. So a lot has changed since 2020. It's about, uh, the site is about an acre and a quarter in size and is currently vacant. Um, and it was created through a subdivision process in 2020 as part of the development of the gas station site. And it's located on the east side of Clear Creek Drive and south of the I-70 hook ramps. Property zone plan mixed use development um, and is part of the larger Clear Creek Crossing mixed use development. It's part of planning area four, which includes more interstate oriented uses and designs given its adjacency to the on ramps. The surrounding zoning is also commercial which includes the I-70 West Business Center to the south. And residential is located further southwest in unincorporated Jefferson County. The request is for approval of a specific development plan for a drive through coffee shop. And the site will gain access via a cross access easement with a gas station to the south, which was approved in 2020. 
and all specific development plans are required to have planning commission approval in, in this case. This is the site plan, which is shown in the SDP and the building location is highlighted in blue. I'll show the proposed architecture on the next slide. The business model for Dutch Bros, which they'll also explain is primarily drive through, which is a permitted use in this area, given that it's adjacent to interstate on ramps. Customers can also walk up to a window and covered patio on the east side of the site, but there's no customer access into the building. The drive through is accessed from the east side of the site by directing entering traffic behind the gas station and the north. This allows the maximum amount of on-site queuing for the drive through The parking provided allows access for staff and walk-up customers. And the drive through is double queued, which will prevent spillover onto the gas station site. Like I said, there's a patio on the east side of the building with bike racks allowing customers to gather and wait for coffee. And pedestrian access is from Clear Creek Drive and the sidewalk provides a direct route to the building with minimal road crossings. The drive-through will be screened on the north side with shrubs and a retaining wall will separate it from landscaping areas to the north. And a full landscape plan was included in the staff report for review. The site significantly exceeds the minimum landscape requirements of 20%. And these are the proposed architectural elevations for the site. The design pattern book for Clear Creek Crossing calls for a modern agrarian aesthetic, which includes traditional building materials blended with a modern feel. This design includes stone veneer on much of the building, as well as fiber cement siding and some wood trim elements. The design allows some retention of the Dutch Bros corporate branding while still incorporating the requirements of the design pattern book. It incorporates a covered patio uh, for the walk-up customers. And each elevation, with the exception of the northwest elevation, which is at the top right of this diagram, meets or exceeds the minimum transparency requirements for buildings in planning area four. However, due to the back of house nature of the northwest elevation, which again is at the top right of the screen, the applicant has requested a modification from the transparency requirement here, which is explained in more detail in the staff report. And overall staff is supportive of this modification and the building design as a whole. We urge is not a full service city and we did send the application on referral to outside agencies, including fire, water and sanitation and also completed a review. We do not have any remaining comments on the SDP and construction documents are nearing completion um, by the engineering division, which includes review of drainage and grading. Before the hearing, the property was posted for 15 days and letters were sent to property owners and residents within a 600 foot radius. Comments collected on Wheat Ridge Speaks um, would have been reviewed, but they, we did not receive any uh, comments uh, either on Wheat Ridge Speaks or just mailed in. Ultimately, staff has found that the request is consistent with the purpose of a plan development and the coffee shop and drive through is a permitted use on the property. All responding outside agencies have indicated that they can serve the property and the SDP is in compliance with the standards set forth in both the outline development plan and the design pattern book. For all of those reasons, staff is recommending approval of the request, which would be the only and final vote on this project. That concludes my presentation and we can turn it over to the applicant. Thanks. I'm going to start adding the applicant team now. It's a bigger than some, so give me just a second. Did I get everybody? Just like it. Okay. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, my name is Derek Liss. I'm a representative of Evergreen Development, and we are the property owner of, uh, of the, the subject parcel. Um, the, the tenant, Dutch Bros, is here, and I'm going to turn it over to Riley to uh, give his presentation. Hi, uh, my name is Riley Rossbotham. I'm with Barghausen Consulting Engineers, which has been uh, working on the uh, specific development plan submittal for this. Um, and I will go ahead 
and share my screen if that's all right to show the presentation. Okay, and can you all see that? Yes. Oh, great. Okay, um, so uh, this presentation is for a specific development plan for a the Dutch Rose drive through crossing or Dutch Rose drive through coffee at 3478 Clear Creek Drive. Uh, just to give a little background on Dutch Rose coffee, uh, it was founded in 1992 by uh, brothers Dane and Travis Bursma, who started out by selling coffee from a push cart. Uh, and since then, the company has grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, now there are more than 400 locations across eight states uh, and over 10,000 employees. It has a reputation for friendly and quick service, and it inspires a lot of enthusiasm and loyalty from customers, uh, especially in Oregon, but now across the country. Um, the company donates over three and a half million dollars a year to local communities and nonprofits, uh, and donates over one million drinks per year. Uh, so this shows a sample of Dutch Bros Coffee's menu. Uh, it's known for its cold brew and energy drinks. Uh, it has a wide variety of signature coffee drinks uh, with creative flavor combinations, as well as a monthly rotating menu of featured drinks uh, with seasonal themes. Uh, so uh, this is the, an aerial photo of the site showing the come and go to the south. Um, the site is uh, located within planning area four of the Clear Creek Crossing development in the Vineyard Commercial District. Uh, and it's bordered by Clear Creek Drive to the west, uh, Interstate 70 to the east, uh, the I-70 book ramp to the north, and then the come and go to the south. Uh, the site is currently vacant uh, and it slopes downward from the southeast to the northwest. Uh, so the southeast corner is the highest part of the site and then the northwest corner is the lowest. Um, so as you can see from the site plan, uh, the Dutch Rose Coffee building is located on the east side of the site. Uh, and it provides a pedestrian walk-up window with a canopy, pedestrian seating area, and bicycle racks. Uh, pedestrians can access the site from the sidewalk on Clear Creek Drive uh, using the pathway, which runs along the south side of the site, uh, which then loops around to the walk-up window on the east side. Um, and that pedestrian access also connects to the uh, come and go convenience store to the south. So to show the elevations, uh, this side shows the vehicle drive through window. Uh, or, whoops, go back one, sorry. Um, okay, so a vehicle drive through is provided on the opposite side of the building. Uh, vehicles will access the site through the come and go property. Uh, vehicles will enter at the southeast corner, uh, travel west towards the beginning of the drive through lanes, and then exit the site either at the southeast or southwest corner back into the come and go site. Uh, two lanes of stacking provide 27 stacking spaces for the drive through one escape lane for those needing to exit the queue early. Uh, 11 parking spaces are provided, and since the site will need to be regraded, retaining wall is provided along the west and north side of the drive through lanes. So as Scott mentioned, the building is designed with a modern agrarian aesthetic uh, and follows the intent and standards of the Clear Creek Crossing design pattern book. Uh, this shows the southwest elevation, uh, which has the drive through window. Uh, Dutch Rose coffee shops have detailed and modulated architecture. Uh, and as you can see, there's a tower element with the windmill logo, uh, which is located over the service window, providing a recognizable landmark. Uh, the materials and colors for this particular Dutch Rose use neutral and earth tones to fit the modern agrarian theme, uh, incorporate the signature dark blue Dutch Rose coloring into the design. Um, and then tan stone siding helps the Dutch Rose blend into the landscape. That same stone siding is carried into the columns for the pedestrian walk-up window on the opposite side. Uh, a large canopy is provided for pedestrians and awnings are provided over all entrances to the building on uh, many windows. The building is articulated along all four sides and has a base element, uh, which also contains the stone veneer. Um, and then finally, uh, the northwest and southeast elevations show Dutch Rose characteristic and colorful signage and additional elements such as awnings, windows, and or articulation. Uh, this Dutch Rose drive through coffee shop will prove to be an amenity for current and future residents of the Clear Creek Crossing development, users of the Clear Creek Trail, those making their commutes into and now with Denver, 
will provide a great start to the day for those heading out to adventure in the Rockies. Dutch Bros Coffee is proud to be expanding into Colorado, and we look forward to hearing your input on this project. Um, that's all I have, so thank you. Then. Thank you, Riley. Yeah, thank you. We will now uh, poll our commissioners to see if there are questions for the applicant or for staff. And I would ask that our commissioners uh, at this point leave or, or limit their comments to uh, later on, we'll, we'll uh, just do questions at this point and we can do comments uh, on the property or on the proposal uh, following the public forum. So we will start with uh, Commissioner Simbai. Do you have any uh, questions for staff or the applicant? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I have no questions at this time. Okay. Commissioner Kearns. No questions at the time. Thank you. Commissioner Antle. I just wanted to clarify. So the only in and out accesses through an easement on the come and go site, right? That's correct, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the only question I had. And Commissioner Disney. I have no questions. Thank you. Uh, I, I do have a couple of things. Um, first off, is it, did, did I miss, uh, misspeak earlier and call it Dutch Brothers? Is it Dutch Bros? Um, I think it's kind of, up to you. Um, Dutch Bros is more the standard, but yeah, either way is. So, so they are bros then. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Um, first off, has uh, your neighbor at Come and Go, have they been consulted on this development? They have been, yes. And there are no objections from, come, uh, from the Come and Go? Nope. We've worked out the, the access. Okay. Them, so. Mm -hmm. um, if if you if you can still share your screen, would you put that uh, that diagram up again? I have a couple of questions about the locations. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the the things. Uh, the first off, well, I'll let you get that up. Okay, there's that. It'll take us back to the site plan. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. Would you, would you point out where? your uh the solid waste uh, containers are going to be yeah Here, i'm just going to move the zoom screen over so solid waste containers will be located here in the southeast corner okay mm -hmm. and is that then adjacent to the come and go their yeah. solid waste yes yeah, so their solid waste container is right here okay. so it just kind of faces that direction towards the southwest and so when the uh when the trash pickup is there um, they, they, the trucks will basically block that entrance driveway, correct? That's true, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. But that, that it can't be helped because I, I was looking at, at the site and thinking where else that you might locate that, but that seems probably the best spot. Um, is, uh, I know you did include a lighting diagram uh, for uh, lighting spill. Mm -hmm. um, is there an issue with the uh, traffic coming from the north to the south on, inter on the interstate with uh, light uh, shining on the highway? Yeah, so there's actually very little uh, light spill onto I-70. I think the maximum that it gets to along the property line is 0 0.1 foot candles. Um, so there's, there's very little spillover onto I-70. Okay. And Commissioner Larson, just to chime in as well, we we don't allow um, lights to have excessive glare. They have to be downcast. They can't be kind of shining up or shining out. They've got to be shining only down. As I as I think about that approach, I believe the um, the that southbound traffic on I seventy is sort of an upgrade uh, as it approaches the overpass. So um, is the is the top of the building below uh, the level of the highway? It will be, it, I believe it's a little bit above the level of the highway. Um, okay. Yeah. It, it's not, it's not even then. It's not the same height. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's a, uh, uh, 
a major thunderstorm with a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. uh, the runoff, you mentioned that the lower portion is the northwest. Will the run with the, the water running off from the come and go also uh, run onto the uh, Dutch Bros site? That one I might um, ask Josh Harlan to answer that one. Um, not if he's on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Josh Harlan with Barghausen Consulting Engineers. Um, the Dutch Bros site has been designed to be isolated, hydraulically isolated from the come and go site. Um, all the stormwater on the come and go site is uh, contained within its parameter, within its perimeter. Okay, and and so Josh, the, real quick, can I get the spelling of your last name? And it's H A R L A N. And address. It is one eight two one five. 72nd Avenue South, Kent, Washington. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harlan. And uh, following that up, uh, rainfall on the uh, the Dutch Bros uh, uh, surface areas, the paved areas, um, where does that go? It is uh, being collected and then piped uh, out of the, out off the site into the public infrastructure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, the, the other question, it, it got getting back to traffic flow, um, the two lanes inbound, they, they'll come in off the come and go site, and then they will head to the west where they split in. There's two lanes, um, heading up to the, the building for the, uh, the carry out the, the drive up window. And you did mention that there was an escape if, if somebody is looking to just get out, uh, but after they bought their coffee, will they not conflict with the incoming traffic? Yeah, so we have um, we have a do not block lane here. So they would kind of come through here and then exit out through here or go back through the parking area here. So there is potential for conflict, but we have uh, put in some signage um, and ground painting to, to prevent that from happening. OK. Very good, thank you. And then uh, last question, uh, you mentioned signage. Uh, what sort of signage are we talking about and where will it be located? Yes, yeah, so um, our main sign will be, the menu board will be located up here uh, at the entrance to the drive-through. Um, and then uh, other than that, there will be directional signage around the site uh, directing people through the drive-through and then uh, wall signage on the building itself. Are there any um, uh, tombstone signs or anything like that off the uh, away from the uh, the paved area? Um, that's one where we're uh, our sign vendor is is working on coordinating that. Um, I know that there's uh, monument signs placed around Clear Creek Crossing, um, so we'll probably have panels on on at least one of those. Um, but I'm not exactly sure of the location of those right now. So so there there will not be any monument signs uh, around the property? We have none planned on the site right now. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Th those are all the questions I have. Uh, if, if other commissioners have questions at this point. OK. So hearing no questions from my fellow commissioners, no further questions. I, I, will... I have one. Sorry. Oh, OK. Go ahead. Is okay, this, uh, Commissioner Kearns, thank you. Thank you. The crosswalk striping is different than the crosswalk striping in the gas station. Is that for a reason or can we make the crosswalk striping in Dutch Brothers site consistent with the crosswalks in the gas station? Um, I wonder if maybe Nick could answer this a little better. As far as I know, there's not a reason that it's different and I, I think we could coordinate it to, to match the, uh, the crosswalk striping to the south. But. Yeah, this is Nick Wecker. I'm a senior planner with Barghausen, uh, working with Riley. And, and yeah, we can we can match um, the gas station uh, striping as well for our for our pedestrian crossings for for compatibility. OK, thank and, you. Uh, Tammy, did you get Nick's? Uh, yeah, uh, can I get your uh, 
spelling of your last name and address, please. Yeah, it's uh, W-E-C-K-E-R. And address is 18215 uh, 72nd Avenue South, uh, Kent, Washington. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wecker. And uh, Commissioner Disney, question? Is the Dutch Brothers uh, business model to have just drive through um, coffee? Is that how they do it? Yeah, that's, that's the standard is it's predominantly uh, vehicle traffic drive through coffee. Mm -hmm. The only thing I noticed as I'm studying this is that it isn't really conducive for getting a cup of coffee and hanging out and drinking it. You pretty much got to get it and go. Um, the patios on the east side right next to a busy, busy, busy highway, not conducive for conversation. Is that why it was cited on the lot this particular way? Yeah, it was cited uh, in that location for a couple of reasons. Um, the main one being um, to maximize stacking for, for vehicles. So having it located on that side and then having the, the traffic come in through the southeast and around, it, it gives you the stacking spaces. Then it also gives you the, the rest of that drive aisle for stacking if it um, there's more. And then the other main reason was the site grading. So in terms, if we were to locate the building on the west side, um, it would mean a much more significant regrade because the slope is located there on the on the northwest side. So a lot of it had to do with um, maximizing stacking and then trying to alter the natural slope of the site as, as little as possible. Um, but I do recognize that it, it is more focused on the, the vehicular um, patterns than, than the pedestrian element. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions from the commissioners? One more question. Um, what happens to the Dutch Brothers coffee on Youngfield? Does it stay or is it going to go away? Uh, I haven't been working on that project, but as far as I know, I, I haven't heard it's going away. I can no, there's, take that one. There's yeah, not, there's not the one on Youngfield. Oh. It's a, I think, I believe it's another chain. I forget the name of it. I think it's a Ziggy's oh, if you're talking about the one that's just at the end of Wheat Ridge. The closest one to this site is uh, Colfax and Pierce, I believe in Lakewood. Thank you. Oh yeah. Okay. It's a Ziggy's coffee. Sorry. Similar, similar model though, that it's predominantly a vehicular oriented. Okay. Other questions? Hearing no other questions, I will now open the public forum for case number WZ21-06. This is an application filed by Dutch Brothers, Dutch Bros, for approval of a specific development plan for a drive through coffee shop or property located at 3478 Clear Creek Drive. We would ask that you limit your comments to this case. We typically administer an oath for any participant in a public hearing, staff, applicants, and the public. In this virtual meeting format, we're administering this oath in a different way. If you comment during a public hearing tonight by choosing to testify, you are agreeing that the testimony you give will be the truth as you know it. If you are interested in speaking on this case, please press the raise your hand button on your Zoom screen. If you wish to speak over the telephone, please press star nine. Tammy, is there anyone who wishes to speak on this case? Uh, there's a couple people in the queue. Uh, if you wish to speak, uh, please raise your hand um, by, if you're on the phone, dialing or pressing star nine. Otherwise, click raise your hand. And nobody is raising their hand. Nobody Last at this time. Chance. We, will, we will wait for the people that maybe can't find that button. You're looking for the raise your hand button. If you're interested in speaking on this case. Okay. 
Nobody at this time. Thank you, Tammy. I will now close the public hearing on, on this case. And we will now poll the commissioners for comments or uh, questions or other thoughts on, on this particular case. This time we'll start with Commissioner Disney. I am uh, happy to see that there is a lot of landscaping being planned for this development. I think it's a, can't have enough coffee and um, I think it's a nice addition to um, the development and I'm happy to see it there. Thank you, Commissioner Disney. Commissioner Antol. You're on mute. There you go. I know we started the meeting this way, <laughs> making sure you unmute yourself. I don't really have any comment. I, I, I think it sounds like a very appropriate type business for the location. Um, and, you know, it seems in line with kind of what the SDP says for that area. And I'm always in favor of other coffee businesses coming into my neighborhood besides just Starbucks. So hoping to, uh, looking forward to trying maybe some Portland coffee. Thank you, Commissioner Antel. Commissioner Simbai. Yeah, I, I live uh, just north of the Dutch Bros that's on Pearson Colfax and uh, sort of pre-COVID days when I go up there to the Planet Fitness to work out. I, I could see sometimes it would get a little bit busy that even the best traffic modeling, it would flow over into the parking lot. Um, very popular, I suppose, coffee. And so I like this design. It seems like it would sort of hold everything together. A little concerned about, you know, if I went to park there, how would I get out of that? if there's a line, you know, but I don't have any good answers for that. So uh, I suppose you all are smarter than me to figure that out. I'm, I'm supportive of this. Thank you, Commissioner Simba. Commissioner Kearns. Hey, unmute. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this, this is great. Uh, I really like Dutch Brothers Coffee. That isn't um, gonna be factoring in on my decision here. Um, I think this is a perfect site. Um, I'm glad you guys are making use of it because it's kind of a small and oddly shaped site. Um, this looks like a good, like, I kind of wish the, it was just a little bit larger in terms of the lanes um, and uh, just a little bit, I, I find the, the maneuver on the, southwest corner to be kind of strange how it's inbound traffic is not allowed to come in through there i think you're gonna have a lot of people trying to come in through there because it looks like the that's where you enter um and if you're not reading the, the pavement markings it's gonna be it's gonna be i think you're gonna have people entering through that southwest corner the the compact design i like it i like how you have the double um, stacking queues, and then the way that you have people actually legally entering the property looks like that also serves as a bit of an overflow queue, um, kind of along that parking lot area. I, I anticipate this is gonna be very popular. You're gonna have a lot of people here waiting for coffee, especially on weekends going up skiing. Um, this, is, this is gonna be a real cash cow for you guys. So the the access situation and the vehicular flows is i think it's a, it's a good a good job with the site you have i i wish it was a little bit expanded but i think i think it's going to be fine for for everything but like the most peak times maybe like you know holiday weekends or ski weekends it could be pretty crowded in there but you know, that's a good problem to have. So um, thank you. I think that's all I have. Um, looks good. Thank you, Commissioner Carnes. Uh, I, 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 I do tend to agree with uh, Commissioner Antal on this. I believe this is a very good example of, of as the Clear Creek Crossing development has come together, we've gone from uh, just uh, a, a brownfield, no, I'm sorry, a, a greenfield to something that is going to be a, 
a, a real asset for the, the city of Wheat Ridge. Um, the, the project I know had uh, uh, kind of fits and starts, but I, I believe as we fill in these pieces, like the come and go station, uh, like, the, uh, like this particular one here, this use of that lot, I think, makes a lot of sense. The, uh, the, the way that it is adjacent to the off-ramp allows for people to come in if they're going to buy some uh, gasoline for their car and then get some gas. They don't have to make two stops uh, right back on the highway. I, I think that, uh, that with a lot of, uh, a, a lot of good things are going to come from the particular site selection here. Um, uh, again, I think this it fits in the character of what we're trying to do with Clear Creek Crossing. Uh, it will uh, provide a, I think, a real benefit to the community. Uh, it has my support, and uh, I, uh, we will, uh, we will now move on to a motion. If there's other questions before we move on, uh, any comments from our commissioners? Any comments from uh, Commissioner Antal? Sorry, I just had to put this in from my days of doing transportation planning that Will reminded me of where. I just want to give a, a kudos to doing cross property access easements as well as reducing the number of driveways. I mean, I think that's like we need to see more of that in the city. So whether it is by design or by trying to make the site work, I do think that's nice to see in Wheat Ridge. So sorry, I had to get that in. Thank you, Commissioner Antle. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Okay, well, I'm, I'm uh, glad that this is a, 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 a fairly easy, I think, uh, 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 item for us on the agenda tonight. I really appreciate that. At this point, we will entertain a motion from the commission. Mr. Chair, I move to approve case number WZ21-06, a request for approval of a specific development plan for a drive through coffee shop on property located at 3478 Clear Creek Drive within planning area four of the Clear Creek Crossing plan mixed use development for the following reasons. One, the specific development plan is consistent with the purpose of a planned development as stated in section 26-301 of the Code of Laws. Two, the specific development plan is consistent with the intent and purpose of the outline development plan. Three, the proposed uses are consistent with those approved by the outline development plan. Four, all responding agencies have indicated they can serve the property with improvements installed at the developer's expense. And five, the specific development plan is in substantial compliance with the applicable standards set forth in the outline development plan and with the city's adopted design manuals. Thank you, Commissioner Antel. Further discussion comments? Hearing none, we will call for a vote. Raise your hand to approve. Motion approved, five to zero. Thank you, Tammy. Our next item is a uh, we're looking at a resolution. Hang on one second here. Thanks to our applicant team. I'm going to demote you or you're welcome to head out at any point in time. Thanks Thank you, you gentlemen. Time. Thank you all. Thanks. And uh, uh, for the next item on the agenda, I will turn this over to uh, to Lauren for a discussion. Yes. Let me... Um. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, so the resolution before you tonight is one that we're supposed to remember to pass annually. Uh, we might have forgotten one year, I think, in COVID and going back through the file. Uh, however, this is a resolution that looks the same for all of our boards and commissions and for city council and state law um, requests that we formally identify the places that we put our public notice. So which newspaper and which specific locations at city hall. And so that's what we've done. The location that is different from years past, it used to be inside the building. Now it's the visible location in case City Hall ever closes. We learned that during COVID. And you'll recall a couple of years ago, the Wheat Ridge transcript was consolidated into the Jefferson County Jeffco transcript. So 
that is what you have before you tonight. And, and Tammy, the three places that somebody can find uh, the city's business? Um, there is uh, outside, there's a, a board that the agendas are posted. Um, also the transcript, the website, and I also put in the very beginning of the entryway into the lobby, usually a uh, full agenda packet for anybody to see. And that's put out a, about a week before. Great. Thank you. Lauren, is there other discussion we need have, uh, or should we just go? Um, do we need to have a discussion on this? Does anybody have any questions on this particular resolution? It, it, again, it, it, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Semi. Just a minor question, and I do a lot of this at work when we're talking about sort of gendered language under the resolution number two, community development director or his designee. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I'm wondering if that could be modified. Yeah, we can change that. Yeah, or their designee. Is that what you typically see? Yeah. That's it, Mr. Chair. Good Thank catch. You. Good catch. <laughs> So we will be voting on uh, the version that contains that modification. Okay. Yeah, we can make that change before it's signed. And is there a, I don't see a, a, a motion in the agenda. There's a motion. Uh, can we simply move to, uh, to there approve the There is a motion resolution? in the memo. There's a motion in the memo. I can make the motion. I'm there it is. I'm sorry. I see it right now. Commissioner Disney. I move to recommend approval of resolution number 01-2022, a resolution establishing a designated public place for the posting of meeting notices as required by the Colorado Open Meetings Law. Thank you, Commissioner Disney. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Senbai. Other questions or comments? Hearing none, we will call for a vote. Raise your hand to approve. Motion approved, five to zero. Thank you, Tammy. We'll now move over to new business. And I would like to uh, make a comment here uh, that uh, at our meeting on October 21st, two members of the Planning Commission asked to step down. As of this evening, appointments have not been announced for two vacant planning commission seats. We encourage anyone living in Wheat Ridge District 1 or District 2 and who are interested in taking part in an activity that is an important part of how we keep our city running. Please consider applying for a planning commission. Information and an application can be found on the city's website. I believe, Lauren, you uh, had an, another th uh, uh, something else uh, regarding the commission uh, appointments. Oh, just um, for your knowledge, I think one of the reasons that we might not have the vacancies filled is at least one of the seats, the term ended in March. And I think there's maybe some hesitation to do a two month appointment, which is why there may be a little bit of delay. If they're appointed in March, then they'll get a full term. We certainly <laughs> would not want to discourage anybody from applying. Right. right thank you. But what district was that in two? Districts one and two. But she said one of them would be a two-month appointment. I can't remember which one that okay. was. Yeah, I have, sorry, I don't have that in front of me. Okay, are there uh, any other new business items this evening? Just a couple comments <clears throat> from us. So we won't have our first February meeting. So February 3rd is canceled. <clears throat> We're still um, thinking we might have something ready for the February 17th meeting. So keep that one penciled in and we'll confirm that in about a week or so. Thank you. And then just a couple project updates for folks. So 44th Avenue, you all would have gotten an email. Um, we have sort of gone live with the 44th Avenue sub area plan, which is exciting. There is now a project page both on the city website and at What's Up Wheat Ridge. So we are encouraging folks to um, register and subscribe on whatsupwheatridge.com. Our first public activities will be in about a month or so. Um, and in February, we will have sort of joint activities with the Let's Talk program, which is currently working in the same neighborhoods in Fruitdale and Anderson Park. Let's Talk is really focused on sort of short-term implementation projects. 
Um, and 44th is asking people to think more long-term, sort of what's your 20 year vision for the sub area. So we're excited to have that up and running. We're just now trying to finalize um, steering or the advisory committee and focus groups um, and set those first meetings up. So at last, at long last, that planning process is starting. Um, my other two updates, so Gold's Market, I think we talked about this one maybe a couple weeks ago, but the tenant mix continues to fill in as those investments have been made in that area. So most recently, I think Patrick shared with council that Illegal Pete's is gonna be one of the tenants, um, the burrito Mexican quick serve restaurant, a running stores in there, they're on the backside, um, coffee shop, I think brewery is the last one I updated you all on in the bowling. So a fun and sort of exciting mix of tenants in that, in that particular development. Um, and then the last update I wanted to give you relates to the Lutheran master plan. Um, you all had the public hearing for the plan and you heard both through the process and in that hearing folks, um, the value of some of those historical assets, the blue house, the chapel, and then um, the tuberculosis tent. I don't know if that came up as much at the planning commission hearing. Those same public sentiments were very strongly expressed at the city council hearing. And during council's hearing, there was sort of a separate consensus among council to bring forward a resolution that formalized the city's support of sort of recognizing these historical structures. And council did that on the 10th. So city council approved a resolution that essentially formally urges future buyers to demonstrate a good faith effort in exploring meaningful reuse options or preservation options for those three structures. So what that means in practice is um, anybody who's looking at that property will be made aware of that. And then, you know, all entitlements will require public process and public hearings, and they'll need to sort of address the work they've done to that end. So I think puts a good sort of closure on that very important topic that sort of probably got the most consensus among the public and we got a lot of different opinions but um, there was vast agreement on wanting to know what the future of those structures would be those are my updates for tonight thank, thank you lauren and yeah. uh, commissioner disney were there uh, something you want to discuss i just wondered and this may the, you may be this is for Lauren and you may be the wrong person to ask this, but I've noticed that as the Wadsworth project is starting, they're cutting down lots of trees. Mm -hmm. And um, is the maintenance, I'm assuming that there will be trees planted after the project's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first bank trees were the ones that sort of resulted in the most phone calls. That was a pretty well established tree canopy. Those were, my understanding is those were ash trees. So they were on a on a clock anyways, um, but yes, the the future um, design or the sort of final design includes landscaping in medians and along the sides of the roads. Are those going to be maintained by the city or CDOT? The city. Okay. Yeah, we usually hire a contractor to do maintenance on state highways, but it's the city's responsibility. Okay. Yeah. Commissioners, any uh, comments, questions in general? Lauren, I just wanted you to remind me on those historic structures at Lutheran, they're not considered historic. Correct. Or are they? Okay, no, they're just they're... locally significant part of the her local heritage. <laughs> yeah, it's a good clarification. There are certain keywords like significant means something to those who are in the historic preservation world. Those three structures are not on any register, local, state, okay. or national. Um, so, and they don't need to be, usually the incentive to put something on a register is to achieve um, financing tools. So like tax credits, um, which is why I think council felt further compelled to sort of memorialize that resolution and, and sort of pronounce the value that we place in those. Um, but no, they're not formally deemed historically significant. Okay. L Lauren, what Thanks. do we see, what's sort of coming up next with Lutheran? Um, the last that we heard and we check in with them about every three to six months or so there, you'll recall that, um, Bentos is the entity that has an interest and, in, and leases those office buildings. So I think they're still trying to figure out their sort of long-term plans. Uh, they've not put the property on the market yet. Um, and they weren't in sort of a screaming rush to do that just because they know that the hospital will still need to operate through 2024 
all the new ones being built. Um, so we're, we're due to check in with them in a couple months and see sort of what their plans are in terms of going to market. I, oh, one other update, actually, somebody asked me this yesterday. Um, there had been a lot of questions about West Vines through the process. And you may have seen a press release that came out in December. SCL Health is partnering, I believe the group's name is Acadia, who is a behavioral health provider. Um, and they're building a new facility that will have more beds than West Pines currently does. And in a location, I'm not sure what the location is, that's sort of better suited to provide behavioral health services. So West Pines will remain open until this new facility that's in partnership um, until that one opens. Uh, thank you, Lauren. And yeah. uh, I'd like to follow up on something that uh, was prompted by an article that ran in the Denver Business Journal on January 10th regarding the company StoryBuilt. And if you recall, StoryBuilt is the developer of the property on 38th that we voted on, uh, I believe, two sessions ago. In that article, it mentions that StoryBuilt has projects going up around the Denver area, and they do mention what they call Project Judy at uh, 3785 38th Street. The article mentions that there are 55 townhomes. And Lauren, I wonder if you can correct that for us, please. Sure, yeah, I, we got a couple calls on this. The, um, you approved a subdivision for fewer units. They are actively in process for a second phase, um, which is, on, is to the west of the project that you approved. So in total, they would have 55 units. They have half of those approved already and the other half in process as a quasi judicial case. So I'm not sure where the wires got crossed or if it was just sort of optimism on the behalf of the applicant or the journalists sort of hearing what they wanted to hear or simplifying it. Um, but we've not changed the number of townhomes that were previously approved. They're just talking about two projects when they reference 55. Uh, uh, optimism on the part of a developer, uh, that's so hard to believe. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate that, and, and I'm, I'm glad you cleared that up. Um, Can I make a, a, a comment? Uh, Commissioner Disney, yes. I, uh, on this developer, um, they had a meeting with the neighborhood. Yeah. <clears throat> Did not go well. I was oh, told. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, is this the same property? The yeah. developer was encouraged to reach out to the neighbors by both you and city council and city council specifically asked them to hold a meeting with the neighbors on Eaton Street to discuss construction impacts, but that is not a meeting that our staff attended so I don't I couldn't speak to them. I spoke to somebody who attended the meeting and they what was conveyed to me was that the developer was less than cooperative and congenial and willing to work with the neighbors. So sentiments are not positive, I would say, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Fortunately. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Disney. Any other, uh, any other discussions uh, from the commission tonight? Not unless you have an update on Lucky. <laughs> I knew I was coming, but don't have an update. <laughs> okay. Any any old business that we uh, we need to cover this evening? Not for me. Okay, thank you. Hearing that, we will ask for a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn our meeting. Second. Second. The motion has been put forth and seconded. Raise your hand to approve. Motion approved, five to zero. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Meeting I am adjourned. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.